Good afternoon, welcome to channel 411. Today's topic, today's job of the day will be to install a two-piece pedestal sink. I've already gone ahead and installed the tailpiece. Tailpiece is actually two pieces. You've got the plastic piece, sometimes this is uh, brass, this is plastic. Here's the pivot hole, here's the pivot nut. There's another nut here and this nut torques in and forces this gasket into the bottom of the sink, the sealing bottom of the sink. There is another seal on the top, the bottom of the sink. Uh, we're going to go ahead and throw some silicone sealant in there and seal that up. But when you seal that up, you got to make sure that pivot hole is mounted properly to the back of the sink, square. Therefore, if you, because this is going to activate the pop-up seal for your sink, the seal that you use to manually open and close the drain. Um, with this in place, you want to tighten the nut and not allow the whole assembly to spin or your top seal of silicone will be compromised. So we're going to go ahead and seal that and torque this nut down here. This nut, you uh, you want to tighten it fairly tight. You want to compress this gasket into the outlet of the sink. You got to be careful. It's just like doing a toilet flange. You don't want to over tighten it. It's kind of something you got to have a feel for. I, I can't explain how many turns of the nut it's got to be. You've just got to sort of feel it yourself. Um, and with this application, you want to make sure it's tight because it's going to be difficult to tighten once you've got the pedestal sink installed. There's the pedestal there. So we're going to do that step right now. Now, once you've got that nut snug, that's what it's going to look like. Again, you're forcing this nut against this back washer which forces this gasket into the porcelain, thus sealing this connection. Again, you're going to want this square with the sink. That's your pivot hole. You want to have that square with the sink. And, and facing backward, of course, toward the wall. And then you're going to want to wipe off the excess silicone on your drain at, at the bottom of the sink. So your next step is to install your pop-up into the drain. And when we do that, we have a lever on the bottom side of the sink that goes into a hole in the tailpiece. But in order to put that in, we need to first install our pop-up. This little round hole here, as we were saying, engages with this part of the lever within this tailpiece to actuate the pop-up. So you want to stick the pop-up in to the drain, have it facing the far side of the drain, the outside of the drain. Simply install the lever with the stopper into the tailpiece that will now hold the pop-up from falling out of the drain then we simply Grab our plastic pivot nut and hand tighten over the hole to fasten the lever in place and make a watertight seal. If you tip the sink over, you will see that me moving the lever will 
raise and lower the stopper. On to the next step. So the next step here is to install the um, faucet. I am installing a Delta two handle widespread lavatory because this particular sink has eight inch on center um, faucets. So it's kind of rare, I got, it, I got it for cheap so that's why I bought it, otherwise I wouldn't have bought it. This sink required the use of a widespread uh, faucet. You can get four inch um, on centers as well. This one happened to have eight inch so um, I'll show you how we do that at the bottom underneath here. But I'm just going to install this. This faucet is installed with a nut and washer and and a rubber washer as well on the back side. So it's it's basically installed in the same fashion. It's got a nut on the back side and we just tighten her up. And again, tighten it up to uh, you know just get a feel for how tight you want to tighten these. They don't have to be that tight, they're not supporting anything, but uh, give her a good torque and go from there. So as you can see, I've already gone ahead and installed the faucets. Here it is on the top side. <clears throat> that is the faucets in their off position. And these may require some adjustment. There we go. Um, you're going to want to make sure that when they're in their off position, they look the same, they're in the same spot, the same position. I may have to adjust that. It's looking pretty good. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that your spout is centered. And that looks pretty good. And here's the backside or underside of the sink. Here is uh, the plumbing that we use that comes with this wide space faucet to take the water cold and hot bring it in and mix it at this T here and then bring it up through the spout. So that's all installed and um, I've also gone ahead and mounted the sink on the pedestal which is located behind the sink as you can see right here to get my drill holes I don't know if you can see my drill holes. Let's see if I can bring this in closer. There are the drill holes for the sink. And what I've done uh, during my rough in was put backing in behind the drywall, some plywood backing. And after I drill those holes through the drywall and the backing, I'm going to install some toggle bolts to the back side. They're going to go through the hole and to the back side of the plywood, expand, and thus form an anchor for my pedestal sink. So I'm going to go ahead and drill those holes now. So as part of your lining up of these holes and putting installing the sink on its pedestal, you're going to want to put the pedestal down in its place and make sure that the distance between the pedestal and the wall is the right distance. And you'll know that when you put the pedestal sink on the pedestal, of course. You're also going to want to make sure that your tailpiece lines up with the drain in the wall. And when you rough this in, you're going to make sure that your center of that drain is going to be the center of your sink. Make sure that your sink isn't going to run into the wall here. You just want to make sure that that's, that's proper when you do your rough ins. You can check your shop drawings. Um, a lot of companies online will have PDF shop drawings explaining your um, rough ins. There are rough ins for sinks. There are rough ins for toilets. There are rough ins for showers. Um, uh, this one was just a matter of finding center of sink, putting it in the position that I wanted to, taking into account your drywall half inch width 
you're going to lose a little bit of, uh, of uh, space there on, with your drywall as well. So those are things you got to take into consideration. So this is the back side of the sink. To uh, get your pop up to work, you simply grab your lift rod, stick it into the spout. Now there may be different configurations and, and permutations of this. There's many, many different ways of doing this, especially on the top, but essentially your lift rod goes in, into its hole. Then you've got your strap. You connect your strap to your lift rod. Here's your lift rod here. See it? Then your strap will screw on a lift rod. Just want to pull this little nut back. This nut tightens on that lift rod. And it's it's infinitely adjustable for height. So you get you can adjust it to the height you wish to have to act to correctly activate your um, pop-up. And there's this retaining clip. I'm sure we've seen all these, seen these before. Pick a hole or the lever and install the retaining clip. And try it. This has got to be adjusted, so we will do so. We'll have it adjusted on the next seam. Alright, so here's how everything comes together. Uh, your, by pushing down on the lift rod, it pushes down on the strap, which then pushes down on the lever. And of course you can, you can adjust all that via this little, I don't know if you can see it, but it's your, it's just a little, um, bolt that uh, ties on to the, uh, when you torque it, it basically uh, torques right into the, the lift rod and uh, that's basically how it activates it. You can adjust that and you can see the lever going up and down inside of the pivot hole and then you spin it around. Here's the sink. And we go up and down on the lift rod you can see the pop-up going up and down. You're going to want to have all of this done, as or at least have as much as possible done on this uh, pedestal sink before you mount it so you don't have to go in behind and do the work while it's mounted. And there's very little space here because the wall is going to be right, right here. Um, the pedestal is going to be right in this area and then all these connections and all these well, the business end of things is it's going to be tough to do underneath there, so it's nice to have it all done. I must say that uh, these hoses, they're Delta. They're a proprietary hose that connects each hot and cold to the spout. And for some reason, these were a bitch to get on. They're a, they're a push fit onto the uh, bottom of the... Um, faucet and they were uh, they were tough they were hard to get on but um, just got to really reef on them and push them I actually had to use some channel lock pliers to get the middle one on but it's on and they uh, they seal the way you get these off is you, you just press on the two sides you, you can tell where you have to press you press on the two ends and it opens up the coupling thus removing the hose but uh, yeah it was a it was a real fun fun time getting those on. So now we're about to uh, mount the sink and screw it to the wall. So here I am under the sink. I am torquing down that lag bolt and the other lag bolt. Oh 
over there. And I've put a bead of caulking in behind between the sink and the wall. And I think I might put another bead right here as well along this, this edge here. So at this point I have mounted the sink, I have drilled the holes of course, and I have again mounted, mounted the sink onto the pedestal. I have put the lag bolt in. I decided to go with lag bolts because it seemed that I'd be putting in smaller holes than I would if I was to put toggle bolts in. So here's the back of the sink. I have mounted the pedestal and this is the pedestal here. The sink is up top. What I'm doing here is uh, I had to put a, an extension onto the tailpiece because my rough end was a little low. The, the extension is a chrome piece that looks somewhat like that or the P-trap here. So what I'm doing is I'm going to level off this trap arm take my measurement inside because I have the extension, the chrome extension piece sitting on the, uh, connected to the plastic tail piece. I'm going to mark where I need to cut that extension. I'm going to take the extension out, cut it, and then reinstall it and put it in. So that's what I'm doing right now. Good times. So I'm continuing on with the drain and here is the chrome extension piece that I marked. So that's how much I have to cut off. This is the amount I had to cut off where my thumb is. Here's the amount I had to extend by, basically. So I'll go ahead and cut that off with uh, some copper cutters. Okay, so I put the extension piece back in, it fits great. But when I went to fit the P-trap and extension piece into the wall, I found that it was about uh, three quarters of an inch too long. You don't want to be too long going into the wall with your chrome extension. Otherwise you'll end up choking the 90 off inside the wall and you're going to have clogging problems in there. So I'm going to take a little bit off. All right, here's your adapter that takes you from the chrome fixture drain to the ABS fixture drain. That's where all the magic happens. So I've glued a small inch and a half length nipple of inch and a half ABS into an inch and a half hub by inch and a quarter I guess it would be a chrome adapter or just trap adapter really is what it's called. It's called a trap adapter. So this is an inch and a half hub ABS by inch and a quarter trap adapter. It's going to go into the wall now. So here is the setup for the sink drain. You've got your furl, plastic furl, on your extension piece followed by your nut, your scutcheon, and your P-trap. So I'm going to make my connection underneath at my extension which has the um, chrome nut and furl already on there and then I'm going to uh, make my uh, connection at the wall and that'll uh, take care of the drain. It all fits and I'll show you when I'm done. So here's the finished product. All the piping supply and drainage has been installed, connected you can see that I had to add to my escutcheon here because this escutcheon when you pull it back the trap adapter kept this escutcheon a little too far back by about a half an inch so I grabbed another um, escutcheon from Home Depot and putting them together does the trick and trims it out nice makes it look good and um, I also added a little bit of caulking around the base, a bead of caulking there to make it strong, a bead of caulking to put the two pieces together, the bottom and the bowl, the pedestal and the bowl. And I added a bead of caulking between the wall and the sink to seal that area in case there's any kind of water that that spills over and one thing about these this delta widespread faucet these two taps the hot and the cold are specific 
to their positions. So make sure you read the instructions and get the, the hot on the left, the cold on the right, or you're going to have a, a fairly uh, difficult time with it. And again, it's very nice to have all three components installed prior to, in, prior to permanently mounting the sink. It's also a good idea to have your trap underneath installed, your, your outlet and your tailpiece installed before you mount this pedestal sink and uh, it'll be a much much easier job for you but uh, that's it thanks for watching channel 411